yesterday had an opportunity to lead a retreat for the teams of my teams of Our Lady group. And Teams of Our Lady is a it's an organization for married couples, and they get together in small group and they pray together and they have community and they grow in their spirituality. And one of the things we do is we do an annual retreat, and it was just lovely just to get away and to have some quiet time to really spend time in prayer to open our hearts to the Lord to just be at a sacred space and to just really be away from all the craziness and distractions of the world and to let the Lord speak to us and it really reminded me of how important our life of prayer is because it's so easy to have the world get in the way all of the you know push notifications on our cell phones and all the the instant things that pop up and this sense of urgency where we just keep going 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 and then all of a sudden we forget to put God at the center and then God falls by the wayside and we see this is what happened in today's gospel passage too where Jesus is gathered with his disciples and he says to them come away by yourselves to a deserted place and rest for a while and so we see that Jesus and his apostles are in the boat and they're trying to get away to have this time of rest and solace and prayer so they can recharge to fulfill their their ministry but we see how there is such a great need among the people that they actually race them to the other side so they meet them there so that they're not able to have that time of prayer but instead they're called into ministry and oftentimes we can see this I mean I've seen this happen in my own life as a priest where I think all all of us would love to spend hours upon hours in prayer and to grow in that relationship with our Lord, but there's always these great needs that happen where, you know, there's masses to be said, there might be funeral mass, we get called to the hospital, we might have to go over to the school or to the family faith formation or to youth ministry to, to help with something or assist with something, take care of something. There might be somebody who is experiencing a loss and we need to minister to them. And all of these are great and beautiful and wonderful things, but without that time in prayer, we don't have that, that energy or that compassion passion to be able to really carry out those that our ministry because that is where um, Christ that's where we need to have Christ the center but of course this is where prayer too as we remind in today's responsorial psalm that amidst all of the trials and tribulations of life amidst all the distractions and difficulty it's through prayer that we get to have this encounter with our Lord who leads us as the Good Shepherd and as we know Psalm 23 it's beautifully states the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want in verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me, he refreshes my soul. Because we see that through all of this that goes on in life, and we spend that time in prayer to rest by those verdant pastures and the green waters that the, and waters that the Lord leads us to, that's what's going to give us that respite to be able to go out and live a flourishing life. Now, in today's first reading from the prophet Jeremiah, we see what happens when we don't take the time to do that, when we don't spend the time in prayer. And this is where the prophet Jeremiah says in, the, in his prophecy from the Lord, Woe to the shepherds who misled and scatter the flock of my pasture, says the Lord. Because we know that Jeremiah is calling them that they will be accountable for their actions. They will, for not leading the flock correctly, they are going to have to atone for that on Judgment Day. And this is where the Lord is calling them to conversion. And of course, we need to be mindful of, you know, we're all human. We all have limitations. We all have, you know, weaknesses that are going to come about. But that's where we always need to be mindful and compassionate towards those people. But we always need to be, um, understand that we need to be called to conversion as well. And this is why we need to experience especially pray for our priest who are on the front lines of all of this, who are out there ministering, doing all this great work, but there's so few of us. That's why we need to pray for vocations as well, so that we have more people to spread all the work that needs to be done, so the needs of the people of God are met. So this is where I humbly ask for your prayers, and I ask you to please pray for vocations as well. But I think for a lot of us, when we read today's first reading from the prophet Jeremiah, we oftentimes, it's easy for us to, in our minds to think of, oh, well, you know, it's those bishops, or it's those bad priests, or it's that diocese. But we oftentimes like to put the onus on other people without, but we forget that at our baptized, baptism, we were baptized priest, prophet, and king. Now, for the, the uh, ministerial priesthood and the priesthood of the baptized are different, but we still are accountable for our role in carrying out our mission as priest, prophet, and king. So whenever we pray for somebody or intercede for somebody or help them grow in holiness, that's carrying out our, the priesthood of the baptized. Whenever we evangelize, when we call others to conversion, when we help others to grow in their faith, that's our shepherding role. And of course, whenever we as say, the we, we lead those who are under our sphere of influence, whether that's our family, our friends, our co-workers, those we encounter, that is our kingly role. And all of us through the, our baptism are baptized priest, prophet, and king. And when 
when we don't successfully carry out those roles, when we don't spend that time in prayer so we have the courage to go out and to do these things, when we don't speak up and speak about the good things of our faith, we will be held accountable as well. And this is where we always need to spend that time in prayer so we have the courage and the mindset to go out and do these things. This is why we need to pray for vocations. We need to speak positively about our church. We need to go out and tell all the great things and to share the gospel message and the story of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We are each called to build up the body of Christ, and woe to us if we don't do that. But today's first reading, we can see all this bleakness that's going on, but we also see in here that there is a glimmer of hope. So the, the Lord, through the prophet Jeremiah, says that the Lord will gather a remnant of my flock. So there's always going to be the faithful who are there who can build up the church. And of course, then the Lord, then he goes on to say that there will be a shoot of the tr stump of the sh a shoot of David, which of course is the Messiah. So at this time, they did not have the Messiah. They were like sheep without a shepherd who longed for that Messiah. But we have the Messiah. We have, we have the Christ. We know that Jesus died and rose again so, and opened the gates of eternal life for us. So this is what gives us hope because we have that life in Christ. We know that there will always be faithful who are there to build up the church. And this is where we need to be part of that. We always need to have hope, even in the midst of all the difficulties and the toil. We always need to have hope in that. And of course, in today's gospel passage, Jesus uses this phrase, this image, where he says that um, they, the people who were gathered around him, they were, they were in need, they were like sheep without a shepherd. And this is where the people of Israel have always needed that spiritual guidance. They always need to be led to the, in, towards, towards in the right direction and, and towards closer to the Lord. And this is where we always need to pick up our, take up our role of, of bringing people closer to God, of ministering to others, of helping to minister in Christ's name of going out evangelizing, praying for others, leading others in holiness. All of us are called to participate in this role, and all of us cannot do these things without spending that time in prayer, without growing closer to our Lord and building that relationship with him. So today as we meditate on our role as priest, prophet, and king, let us be mindful that we are called to go out and to do all these good works, to evangelize, to help others grow in holiness, to lead those in our spiritual influence towards Christ. And we have to do all these things by being rooted in prayer. May we spend time each and every day in prayer to build our relationship with Christ. May we not, it's not something that's ancillary to our lives. It's not something we just do on occasion, but it's something we need to do each and every day so that when we have those times of tribulation, difficulty, we can always run to the Lord. We can have that peace of, with him in prayer, and he can lead us to the still waters, just as the good shepherd leads us to that verdant pasture. So too, may the Lord lead us during those times of trial in our lives, and may we always be strengthened to go out and carry his good work by our daily prayer, that daily time we spend building our relationship with God.